Hey, what's up guys? Nick the Informative Fisherman here, and today I'm gonna break down some of my favorite summertime baits that I've received in the Lucky Tackle Box Panfish Box, which is now the Panfish and Trout Box. But I want you to look over all that, basically small predatorial fish type of lures. Let's think about it that way, so let's break it down. So let's start off with my search bait. This is something I see a lot of people look over and I oftentimes find myself doing it and I don't know why I'm doing it. I get out to a particular body water and I have these preconceived notions of where they're going to be. All of a sudden I go there, I fish something slow moving and I don't get bit. So then I have to go back into my box and tie on a search bait. And when I'm talking about search baits, I'm talking about things like little rattle traps, spinners, the micro chatter bait. And these are a lot of my favorites that I'm going to go over. And the mindset you have to have is these fish aren't always in the exact same position in the summertime. They're going to move deep. They're going to move into heavy cover. They're going to follow smaller, um, smaller baits around. They're generally going to be fairly nomadic, all panfish species during the summertime. Sometimes you'll find your favorite dock that they'll sit on and you can go to and catch them every time, but that's kind of the exception. So what you always want to start off with in your head is that you're going to be fishing a bait that you can cast relatively far and cover water with fast until you get bit and then we're going to go back into those baits that I like to fish slowly with once I have the fish located. Now here's some things you want to start off with. What panfish species you're targeting whether it's crappie, yellow perch, uh, trout. I, I kind of put the trout in the panfish category even though they're on their own separate thing but a lot of the time those little rainbow trout and stuff do fall into that panfish category um, and they do end up in a lot of the same spots that I find myself doing and LTB has panfish slash trout boxes so it kind of works out at the same time. So whether you're going for crappie or yellow perch or large red ears, they're going to hit a slightly larger bait versus a bluegill for example. If you have bluegill or smaller red ears or smaller crappie in your system, you're going to be wanting to throw something a little bit smaller. So keeping all that in mind, let's start off with one of my favorite search baits and Lucky Tackle Box actually introduced this to me. That's the Micro Chatter Bait and I'll show you this bait up close. Now the interesting part about this bait is it's just like a regular chatter bait for bass fishing. It vibrates and it gets a better than average bite and the great part is you can hook ton of two and three inch plastics on the back as a trailer. What I found is this thing works substantially well for getting big bites on red ears and much better than average crappie bites. Um, I've never caught a trout on one, not saying it doesn't happen, but if I'm looking for big red ears, I'm generally gonna fan around that chatterbait. And the nice part is the depth control is strictly dependent on how long you let it sink or how fast you reel it. To where if there's shallow heavy cover, you could throw it up there and start reeling the second it hits the water and you can be up there in those shade lines, paralleling a boat, paralleling a boat dock, but at the same time, you get out and you're like, I think they're deeper and there's a rock pile in 10 or 12 feet. You can cast it out there, let it fall all the way to the bottom and slow roll it in. Those bigger red ears are going to be down near that rock or under up that shade. They're less likely to be around grass or standing timber versus where a crappie would. So that bait is extremely versatile in that sense. The same time I'm going to pick up like a 50 to 60 size jerk bait. This is smaller. Um, this also came in the Lucky Tackle Box, but it's not as small as that little two inch bait right there. And I'm going to tell you the time and place for these. This is something I'll fan around with searching for trout or searching for crappie. Red ears generally are not minnow eaters unless the minnow is relatively small. Uh, bluegills and red ears will eat a minnow about that size, but not this big. The nice part about a jerk bait, if the water's cleaner, I'm going to be throwing that to look for those particular species, the trout and the crappie. If that water is dingier, that chatter bait's a much better choice. It has more vibration. That pure chartreuse uh, really gets their attention. But this will also catch the crappie, but in cleaner conditions, this guy is usually going to outperform this guy. Now, before I get back into the variable to that jerk bait, let's jump up to the next one. A lot of the time we're out on these lakes, and whether you're bass fishing or pan fishing, you're going to see a lot of little, little tiny shad around, and very few people ever match the hatch on those little tiny shad. This is that little micro, it's a 3 16 rattle trap. This is the little, little tiny guy, it's the smallest one they sell. This is arguably the most versatile lure in the world. No matter where you go, this dang thing will catch fish. A uh, nice part about 
This again is it's dependent, the depth controls, how long you let it sink or how slow or how fast you retrieve it. This is huge. Cleaner water, I'm gonna use that nickel blue. If the water's stained, I'm gonna use solid painted colors. Um, if the water's really dirty, I'm gonna go for like a black or a dark purple or a dark green in that pattern right there. But they have a million different patterns to match the hatch with. Um, very, very versatile and it's audible too. So dirty or clear, it looks like a natural bait fish in cleaner water, dirty water, um, it's got a lot of noise in there, so that's gonna find them for you. That is much more versatile. That's about inch and a half, two inches, I would say, is more versatile for more versatile for all species. So that's why I say that one can outperform that jerk bait or that trap uh, or that chatter bait at times. But there's once again a time and a place where you need to try all of these things because they could be on one particular that uh, thing that day. An inline spinner like a rooster tail right here. This is the minnow spin that came in the Lucky Tackle Box Panfish box. That is a tiny guy right there. Look at the tip of my index finger. He is, he is not much bigger than that. Insanely well for finding bluegill. Bluegill and red ears love inline spinners okay even green sunfish love inline spinners if it's close to the rocks but it's really strange there's periods that i find where they want an inline spinner over everything else and then when they don't want it it's always one of these other baits that just absolutely slaughters them so if you're not getting bit on those other presentations an inline spinner has this weird time in place these fish get into this weird funk to where they want to eat that inline spinner now this is where I'm going to get into my hybrid presentations, okay? This is a hard bait slash soft bait. A jig head with a soft plastic grub or like a creek spin right here uh, with a soft plastic over the part of that little lead right there. So now the reason why I'll try these, let's say I'm not getting bit on my hard baits very well. This is where I want to start incorporating my soft plastics. Maybe it's tougher. Maybe it's not very windy. Maybe the water's really clean and slick. And this is where the fish have a better look at your presentation. And better look often means less strike. So incorporating plastics now is tougher conditions. We use more plastics, we go slower. So that grub right there, I can control the depth with that jig head. Uh, that's a... Uh, 1 16th ounce jig head. Sorry, I had to think about that for a second. And this guy right here is an eighth on there. And I'm going to slow roll this along the bottom. I'm going to fish middle of the water column, top, around shade, all over. That's more versatile right there. But at the same time, that same style is basically the same difference. If you imagine this grub right here with a spinner, it's just an opposite position right there. Or you can do the exact same thing with an underspin on a road runner. You just put that grub on there and the reason why i'll throw things with the underspin if i still see there's a lot of bait fish around generally the underspin option is the better deal um, if i don't see a lot of bait fish around or if i'm not looking for as big of a panfish adding that spinner that underspin or that creek spin style is going towards a bigger fish and it's also matching bait fish but if i don't see a lot of that around i'll go more subtle with just the straight up grub on the jig head by itself so under the toughest conditions for all that out there, slickest, calmest, that's my revert right there. But you're not moving as fast as you are with these weighted, bigger baits, and you're not looking for as big of a fish. So I'm fanning water, I'm covering all the areas that look good until I get that bite. Once I'm positive I located fish, let's jump into the other presentations I like to catch more and more and more. Because a lot of the time, if you keep making casts to active fish, they start to recognize a hard bait faster as being unnatural, and you start getting fewer and fewer bites unless you switch to a more calm or a more subtle presentation, which I'm gonna show you right now. So now we have our fish located. We got that first bite on our moving bait. We made a repeat cast. We caught another one. We made a few more casts. We stopped getting bites. But now we have that general idea of knowing where they are. So, depending on your moving bait retrieve, your bait for fishing and covering water, you're gonna know if you caught them near the surface of the water, um, going on a slightly faster retrieve. Let's say they're suspended in the middle of that water column, or you felt like your bait was close to the bottom. So now ultimately you have to decide whether they were suspended or whether they were on the bottom to where are you gonna incorporate a float into your fishing style or are you gonna let the bait get all the way down on the bottom and, and hop it? So I'm gonna tell you a little bit right away from the bottom. So let's say I had that moving bait on. Let's say I got bit on that grub. 
Now this is where you're going to want to change your style. You're going to want to cast out there. If you think they're on the bottom, let it fall all the way to the bottom. Twitch, twitch on your rod tip and then slow roll it. And they are going to bite that. It's still a moving bait, okay? You could still get those extra bites. Let's say you were catching them on that trap and they stopped biting that. And then you tied this on because you still want to fish a moving bait and fish more effectively. Or you, did, or you thought they were over a 100 foot area in, instead of like a 10 foot area and where you want to keep making a little fan cast around. That's going to help you dial them in. You're still going to get a lot of bites. But once, once this grub bite stops, this is where something you can pick up like one of your little traditional tube jigs right here. On a slightly lighter jig head, fall it down to the bottom and just shake your rod tip and occasionally hop it up off the bottom doop, doop, and let it fall back down and work it right there. You're going to get a lot of bites, especially if you were fishing the grub and then you switch to a tube jig in the same color. Those fish are dialed in on that pattern. They're dialed in about that size. They're dialed in on that color. You're going to get a lot of extra bites hanging in the strike zone, jiggling it around. From there, you have like your crawdad presentations. And this is the crappie magnet. And that sucker right there is what I use for red ears and crappie. For crappie, I like the white and the pure chartreuse. Just for me being in Northern California, that color consistently works for me. Uh, this is like a uh, watermelon red flake right here. It looks like a little juvenile crawdad. This right here has hammered some gigantic red ears for me and green sunfish uh, up in the rock. So that is a little bigger, better fish that I'm targeting right there. Let's say I didn't have fish that were capable of eating that. This is where I throw something like the trout magnet. This is the much smaller version of the crappie magnet. This thing right here is so deadly versatile. I consider this to be arguably the number one fish catching panfish lure I have ever used. I have no ties to crappie magnet or trout magnet or whatever. I've just used it and it flat out catches fish day in and day out. That's just a little pure brown color right there or pumpkin, whatever you want to call it. Now that right there, you can get back down in that same area. It's so subtle, even under the toughest conditions, it catches the crap out of them. But let's say you located those fish a little deeper. Let's say they're 10, 12 foot deep. You could pull the boat over the top of them. Vertically jigging in the summertime is something I love to do. Little cast masters. Uh, this little jigging spoon came in the lucky tackle box right here. I forgot when that was called, but it's a little bar jig right there. It's about an inch and a half, two inches long. Now these right here is when you see those fish on the fish finder, you get over them, you're positive on the bottom, you creep right over, uh, you're looking at your graph, you drop it down, boom, bump the bottom and just barely jig it up and down right there on the bottom. For bluegills, red ears and crappie, these things smash them right there. They look like little shads or little bait fish and that is a deadly, deadly effective way to catch them in the summer when they're a little bit deeper. And don't be afraid right next to your boat dock too. If you're standing on a boat dock, dropping it straight down right there because the shade sun barrier serves as a little predatorial wall. Those fish are gonna sit in the shade under that dock and anytime a little bait fish or something cruises by, that is the wall for them to run out where they can't be seen and grab it. So vertically jigging right off the side of boat docks with a little tiny jig like that can be insanely deadly. So don't think you need to get out and cast. You can fan it with a little grub and stuff down the side of those docks, but vertically jigging, you can sit there and pick those docks apart right as you're walking on them. So let's jump into the category of our fish are suspended, but we wanna make repeat casts now to that same area and catch suspended fish that are not wanting to eat off the bottom and they're not wanting to eat off the surface. All right, so now we're targeting those suspended fish. This is where those little jerk baits come into play. We've located them. Now we have a natural, translucent, clear looking bait fish jerk bait. And you're gonna imagine it's winter time. Even when you have the fish located in the summer, twitch, twitch, let it sit there for a minute. Twitch, twitch. Let it sit there, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, and let it sit in the middle of those. Very, very underutilized is tiny jerk baits for panfish, especially suspended panfish, crappie, trout, hammer the tar out of these. You can go to any river, stream, or lake and catch the tar out of them if you have them located on that right there. Another thing I like to do is I like to put little tiny subtle natural swim baits. This recently came in a Lucky Tackle Box Panfish Box. Euro Tackle Micro Finesse B Vibe. It's a little tiny skinny natural swim bait. I'm going to probably put this as light as a 164th ounce jig head. Then that bait falls, it's going to hit the water and it's going to literally fall this slow. I can slowly, slowly reel it and creep that little natural swim bait 
right through the middle of the strike zone and catch fish after fish after fish. And yeah, it is a cast and retrieve style bait, but I'm not covering a lot of water with it. I'm moving it insanely slow through suspended fish that I can catch. The lighter the jig head, the slower I can get it to move. I'm now going to catch fish I've already located. I'm not gonna fish a 164 ounce jig head on a little tiny swim bait like that and try to go find them. I may cover five, 600 feet of bank in a day where I could have covered miles with one of my bigger lures to locate them and then switch to something like that and hammer them. So catch them with bun weight, all of a sudden you switch to another bait and start hammering them. Does it make sense? Absolutely, if you truly think about it. Now, the same thing I wanna show you too, right here. Suspended fish, you can also throw a little tiny, like that little trout magnet right there, on a really little light, tiny jig head. You're gonna to have to throw insanely light line, okay, to cast a 164th ounce jig head. Um, you can cast it out there and let it sink all the way through. That dead slack sink works really, really well on little tiny plastics and super light jig heads. Just that slow fall, looks like something died or another predatorial fish hit something and a little particle of that fish fell off and it's floating down. If you've ever seen ducks eating bread, um, you'll always see the bluegills and stuff sitting right under the ducks picking off those particles. Uh, and that kind of works in that same area right there. Don't expect to be able to cast much farther than 30 feet, even on two pound tests and an ultra light rod. But here's something you can do. Let's say the water's cleaner, you don't want to get close to your fish. This is where float fishing, something like the Bill Lewis Rocket Bobber, these came in the Lucky Tackle Box, Panfish, and Trout Box a few times. These are honestly the most versatile lures there are. They're designed for casting a long range. Uh, you could set it up for fixed bobber to where it says uh, a slip bobber like that, or a fixed bobber. You could rotate it around uh, and it'll drop all the way back in and crimp on your line. And all fixed means is you have a fixed amount of line. The bobber doesn't slide up and down. It's locked on there. And what a slip bobber means is you put a bobber stop up from that and you can leave that little opening right there in the crimp like that and your bobber will slide up and down. So you can set 10 foot of line out if you want and fish that deep. And the nice part is you can set it to where those fish are suspended. One last little tip I wanna give you, if you know about how far they are down, if you wanna pick a bigger pan fish out of that school, try to make sure your bait's a foot or two over that school, not in the school, not below the school, but above it. Bigger pan fish tend to travel up farther than down farther. Hopefully you guys like these tips or make sure to follow Lucky Tackle Box on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. And follow me, Nick the Informative Fisherman, on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Best of fishing, guys.